Good afternoon. Welcome to Immunology Lecture 1. Today we'll be discussing what is immunity. And in particular, we'll be looking at some of the components of the immune response, as well as the stages of defense. And finally, we'll get to some general characteristics of the immune response. But first, before we get into all of that, can anybody tell me what this disease is? Well, I'll give you a hint. It has a 30 to 35% mortality rate. 65 to 85% of survivors have severe scarring. And 2 to 5% of the victims actually have blindness and limb deformities. This is actually smallpox, variola major. It's been with humans since 10,000 BC, and it's estimated that there were 400,000 European deaths each year during the 18th century. And I say in the 18th century because that was the century that Edward Jenner actually became the father of modern immunology due to his observations of smallpox. Edward Jenner himself was a uh, military doctor, and he retired to the countryside, and he saw milkmaids who had very smooth skin. They didn't have the scarring normally associated with smallpox. However, they did come down with another disease, a disease that they actually got from the cows called cowpox. These are pustules from the cowpox. Yes? Um, excuse me. I think that the milkmaids have smooth skin, but mm -hmm. um, here in the picture, it looks like they have kind of pustules. Mm -hmm. Is that the cowpox? Yes, there are some milder pustules. These pustules are actually relatively mild compared to the cowpox scarring that you'd normally see. So Edward Jenner decided to test the theory that the cowpox infection actually protected the milkmaids from contracting smallpox. Now, to do this, he actually transferred pus from the open wounds of a milkmaid named Sarah Nelms to an eight-year-old boy named James Phipps. Following this transfer, he then challenged James with a variety of smallpox material. Now, obviously, James survived. And cowpox, another name for it, is vaccinia. And this, became vac this is where vaccination came from. And to put this in a little more context, this was actually 65 years prior to Louis Pasteur actually showing that microbes were causing spoiling of milk and beer. So, and, and in effect, advancing germ theory. 65 years before germs were even beginning to be recognized as causing disease. So immunology has been around for a while. But when we talk about immunity, what is it? Well, we can't really talk about immunity itself without talking about what types of things generate immunity. What types of things, just in general? Infection. Infection with, say, a virus. Very good. Um, other things that cause infection say, bacteria, yes. Now, these things can generate an immune response, and this is widely known. But we also have commensal bacteria within our gut. This also has the potential to generate an immune response. Why does this not occur? Well, hopefully you'll learn that throughout this course. But there's a, a many other things that we can generate an immune response towards, including fungi, particulates within the air, the crystals that we breathe in or pollen that we breathe in, toxins surrounding us, parasites, even the food we eat and our own cells. So when we talk about, about an immune response, we need to put this into a little bit of context. There are actually two arms to the immune response that work together. There's first innate immunity, and this is a broad field that's rapidly developing. 
Some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about here, we didn't even know about when I originally took this course. But innate immunity in general recognizes patterns. And these are patterns that we recognize from birth. There's a second arm of the immune system called the adaptive immune response. This one also recognizes patterns, but it's adapted to recognize these patterns. It's patterns that we're exposed to over time. And I'll show you an example of this in a couple of slides. And as we talk about immunity, usually we're referring to protective immunity. But not all immunity is protective. When we talk about autoimmunity, that's generating an immune response to our own cells. Now, there are various levels of immunity. And in fact, when we talk about what type of what immunity is, we also have to look at where these microbes are or where these pathogens are. So when we start with pathogens outside the body, what protects us from them? Our skin is the first level of defense, our mucous membranes. Assuming they get past those levels of defenses, they get inside the body. We have another level of defense that most people don't necessarily think about, namely the pH of our body, the fluid level, the oxygen tension, the temperature. Assuming that the pathogen is adapted to survive in these conditions, it's then considered extracellular. This is where we start to get into the levels, into levels of our actual immune system. 